Hello cheapskaters and welcome to the Cheapskates Club show. It's Tuesday the 9th of March 2021 and this is a YouTube premiere. I am loving the premiere format because it means I can join you in the live chat. If you are wondering how to join live chat, you just need to be logged into your YouTube channel that's what YouTube calls their accounts, or your Gmail account. Now, that's a YouTube requirement. It's not a cat one. I'm sorry. I'd make it easy for you. If you don't have either of those, then you can leave a comment in the comments below. It's down there underneath me. And I will be able to read them after the show. And if you've got a question, I'll try and answer it for you then. Now, just before we get started, I'll be able to answer your questions in the chat during the show. So if you have a question, please put it in all capital letters, all uppercase, so it stands out and so I can see it and find it. The comments really do scroll by quickly for me on the side here and it's really easy to miss a question oh and please don't forget to give us a thumbs up thumbs just under there and share the video with your friends anyone you think might benefit from it please just click that share button lastly if you haven't already subscribed to our channel please do all you need to do is click the subscribe button and then click the bell and you'll be notified every time we do a show. It's that easy. Now, how to repress, let me start again. How to recession proof your pantry. This is a really fun topic. I love talking about this stuff. Now, I'm pretty sure that other than the basics that I buy from Aldi, and I buy them from Aldi because they are the cheapest I can find. I don't ever pay full price for anything in my pantry. It doesn't make sense to me to be paying full price when with a few simple and really easy habits, and they are simple and they are really easy, I can save at least 50% on most of the groceries that I buy. 50%, folks, that's a lot. Seriously, I'd rather spend our money on fun stuff than give a bigger profit to the supermarket chains. The first thing I do, and this really is the biggest money saver, is to buy ingredients. Yes, ingredients. You've all heard me say that when you have ingredients, you have options. I say that all the time. And it's true. Pretty much all the Armstrong family eats has the same basic ingredients with the addition of a few extras for flavor or texture to change them up. That, together with the way they're combined, is what turns them into different meals or snacks or treats. It's that simple. So our pantry is full of flour. I have plain flour and self-raising flour and gluten flour. I have corn flour. I have wholemeal spelt flour and rice flour. And then I have white sugar and brown sugar. Brown sugar is so easy to move. It's really simple. You start with one cup of regular white sugar and add one tablespoon of molasses. You'll find molasses in the health food aisle at your supermarket. Now, you can mix it with a spoon or a fork. I just use the mixer to do the hard work. This will give you a light brown sugar. To make a dark brown sugar, you add one or two tablespoons more of the molasses. And mix, and mix. It takes a while to mix, so just keep on stirring. Mooing brown sugar is so much cheaper than buying it. Really is. 
Now to keep it nice and soft, you just store it in an airtight container in the fridge. There's no need for the slice of bread on the top or the slice of apple on the top. They are two suggestions I've come across over the years for keeping brown sugar soft and they both just gross me out. I keep wondering how often you need to change the slice of bread or the piece of apple before it went mouldy and what would happen if you forgot. No. There is another option that's quite simple too and that's to get a terracotta disc, soak it in cold water and then just sit it on the top of the brown sugar in the canister. Now you can buy really cute little terracotta shapes that are made just for this purpose or you can buy a small, tiny, you know, two-inch terracotta planter saucer from the hardware shop or a garden centre. But again, you're paying out good money for something that isn't strictly necessary if you use an airtight, airtight container and keep the brown sugar in the fridge. I've been doing it for... 32 years. Works wonders. Never have lumpy brown sugar. Okay, back to basic ingredients. I've covered flowers and sugar. Um, I'll be honest, though, I do have a couple of bags of icing sugar on hand because sometimes it's easier. Again, you can moo icing sugar, but you need to remember to add one teaspoon of corn flour to the powdered sugar so it will set. Um, when you add your liquid to it. Then we have pasta as basic ingredients. Spaghetti and a noodle of some kind. It's twists or shells or even macaroni. Whatever I buy when I do the shopping. I only buy generic pasta. Honestly, we can't tell the difference between expensive brands and Aldi. So the cheapest wins. We are not pasta snobs. <laughs> other than we like it, although I think we all prefer the moo lasagna to a bought lasagna. But, you know, otherwise it's generic and cheapest. Dried fruits I keep. I have mixed fruit, sultanas, currants, glacé cherries, dried apricots, and I'll include glacé ginger to this list because where else am I going to put it? Um, I have rice. I have powdered milk as a basic ingredient. Now, I use powdered milk a lot. I use it to make milk. Um, I use it to make white sauce mix, cream of chicken soup mix, hot chocolate drink mix. I use it to make custards. Um, and, of course, moo evaporated milk and moo condensed milk. Don't buy condensed milk. Moo it. If you need to know how, go to the Cheapskates Club recipe and find out. Then there's just basic herbs and spices, cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, mixed spice, ginger, cumin, coriander, oregano, basil, thyme, sage, chili, paprika. Mm, and there's a few more. Now, these I usually buy from Hindustan Imports in bulk because they are a fraction of the price of buying them from the supermarket. Then I have a few tinned goods, not a lot. Tomato soup, pineapple rings, tuna, uh, some salmon baked beans, nut meat, apricot nectar and mm, some tins of tinned fruit that I buy from the SPC outlet in Bayswater. Then I have basic sauces like soy and Worcestershire, although I do moo the Worcestershire sauce, tomato and barbecue sauce. I have some condiments like honey, Vegemite, peanut butter and yes, I consider those ingredients pantry basics. They're all ingredients. They can all be combined to make so many in so many different ways to make so many different dishes that are already available ready-made. But if I were to buy them ready-made, our grocery bill would at least quadruple. I can't see the sense in spending that money when it doesn't take any longer to make them from scratch have the ingredients in the pantry I can just whip them out and make it up and truly it doesn't take long and when you buy ready-made you often still need to add extras to them to finish them off 
and that just adds to the cost. I know people talk about the $3 pizzas from you know, Coles and you can bring them home, but, oh, you still need to add a bit more tomato sauce or maybe some herbs or maybe a bit of cheese or capsicum or mushrooms or whatever. So that $3 pizza is actually not costing $3. It's costing $4 or $4.50 or more. You need to think about these things when you're buying ready-made or pre-prepared or ready to eat because often they're not truly like that so if you really want to recession proof your pantry you'll start by filling it with ingredients just ingredients and learn how to use them the next biggest money saver is to watch the sales cycles and only buy when what you use is on sale now my favorite sale is of course the half price sale buying two for the price of one not only makes me smile but it is a really quick and a cost effective way to fill your pantry if you're stockpiling for any reason half price sales are the way to go for a quick boost and again it makes sense to take advantage of the half price sales to recession proof your pantry it's just common sense, whether it's tin soup or deodorant or toothpaste or jam or pasta or beetroot or even pet food. If you use it and it's on half price when you are shopping and you have the money in your grocery budget or in your slush fund, then stock up. Buy at least two for the price of one to add to your pantry. Remember, we're aiming to never pay full price for groceries. We want to recession-proof our pantry. We want to be able to eat the foods we like at the lowest possible price all the time. Now, this spreads across to fruit and vegetables too. If you don't grow what you eat, and <laughs> seriously, let's face it, it's pretty hard to grow everything we eat in the fruit and veggie line. It's almost impossible. We can buy it, grow a good portion of it, but it's pretty hard to grow all of it. Then you need to buy it. So buy what is in season when it's not only at its best, but it's at its cheapest. And check where it comes from. Try to buy locally if at all possible. It'll be cheaper, it's fresher, you're supporting a local business. Sure, it, it's nice to have blueberries all year round, but when they're out of season in Australia, that means those blueberries that you are buying are imported and you are paying a premium for that privilege. Buy and eat what is in season. You'll not only spend less, but you won't get bored with your food either. Honestly, we are so spoilt to be able to eat everything year round, that we become very blasé and bored with our food very, very quickly. It's a bit like Christmas. The anticipation makes it worth the while when you have to wait a while to enjoy peaches or grapes or apples or, or whatever. Then you really enjoy them when you get them and you really appreciate them and you don't get bored with your food. Now, one thing that is hard to get on half price, or a few things that are hard to get on price, half price, and that is really adding to most grocery budgets at the moment, is meat and poultry. So expensive and just going up. But you can still save a lot if you're smart when you're shopping. First off, Ditch the $50 a kilo steak. And yes, I saw steak at Costco today for $50, $52 a kilo and the $30 a kilo legs of lamb. Keep them for very, very special occasions. Take a look at what you eat regularly and which cuts of meat you use the most. Then concentrate on trying to get them at the lowest possible price. So mince, chicken fillets, chops, silver sides, sausages, drumsticks, chicken wings, whole chickens. These are the things that we eat the most. 
sometimes I'll find a great deal on steak and if I can I'll buy it and then freeze it for a treat every now and then and we really really enjoy it because it's a treat don't go past the meat cabinets at the supermarket without looking for the markdowns check them carry a calculator so you can work out if it's worth buying it even if it's marked down sometimes it's not so you need to do the sums and you know you can always freeze it if you're not going to eat it before it runs out doing all these things are habit to me now and they can become habits to you too and they all mean that the food in my pantry is always always bought for less than the shelf price a price is going up oh my word yes they are do you need to pay full price for your groceries? Absolutely not, ever. Don't listen to the naysayers who tell you that it's stupid to have a full pantry, that you're wasting money by putting it on the pantry shelves, that it's going to go off before you use it. They're jealous. Keeping your pantry full is an investment. And it's an investment with a rather healthy, healthy profit return, around 50%. Now, you show me any other investment that gives you an ROI of 50%. There isn't one. And I'm pretty sure that's why those jealous friends and family try to undermine your confidence. They don't want to put the few minutes a week into shopping the way you do to save like you do. Now, you don't need to be a great cook or an amazing baker to recession-proof your pantry. You just need to shop a little differently to all those spendthrifts that we all know and love. We all have them in our lives. Changing your shopping habits will put more money in your purse to use to recession-proof your pantry even more or perhaps to pay down a bill or to pay more off your mortgage, or even splurge on a treat. Just try it. The reward is going to be instant, and you will be on your way to recession-proofing your pantry, to never, ever paying full price for groceries again. You will always be ahead of the supermarket prices. You will always get more bang for your buck. Your pantry will always be full and you will always be happy to go shopping because you will know that you are getting the very best value you can and that you are recession-proofing your pantry. Now, whether we are in recession or in depression or not doesn't matter. We should always still be working on recession-proofing our family. Because if the last 15 months have taught us anything, it's that life can go pear-shaped <laughs> at the click of a mouse button almost. So we need to just be a little prepared. And you know what? I, I think I'd cry if I actually had to pay full price for groceries. When you recession-proof your pantry, you have the option because you've got ingredients, you've saved money, but also because you've got that little bit of a buffer, you can wait for the next sales cycle. You can wait till it comes down in price. You can wait till the fruit's in season. And you won't have to pay full price ever again. So short show tonight, but I hope it's been useful for you. It's really, to me, one of the things that, Hmm. it's a major part of, of our saving, our cost-cutting and money-saving routine is to recession-proof our pantry. So thank you all so much for joining me. Um, I hope I've been able to answer your questions. If you've got any others, please don't forget to put them in the comments underneath and I'll get to them after the show if I can. And please remember to give us a thumbs up Let's just click on the thumb underneath me here and I'd really appreciate it. And I'll be back next week, same time, and I hope you'll be able to join me again. 
Have a great week, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. Good night.